There are a lot of things in anime that don't make sense in real life. For example, their eyes are super big, their mouths are cut into two, and the fact that their crush always likes them back. These are all examples of unrealistic things happening in anime. But here's the thing, they still look good. Even though their faces are way out of proportion and unrealistic, people are still simping for them. Why? Well, I'm gonna explain them in a bit. Listen to the pros, okay? Actually, quick disclaimer here, I'm not a professional artist, I am, however, a professional cloud chaser. However, speaking of pros, even pros, I mean, especially pros, use references, okay? One classic example, Jojo poses. What the heck, you think this guy just pulls his pose ideas out of his butt? A lot of these drawings are heavily inspired by references, okay? Jojo is pretty well known for that. But Colleen, how am I gonna express my creativity when I just copy off a reference? Here's the thing, you won't be able to express your creativity if your drawing sucks. Just kidding. Okay, the thing is, you don't just copy off a reference word for word, that's dumb. Using references is not cheating, it's more of just using a guide for your drawing to not suck. The thing about master anime artists is that they elevate the photo that they're copying. Look at this, One Piece. There are so many freaking characters in One Piece, so many characters to sim for. You think that the mangaka just thought of these amazing character designs and just pulled these designs out of his butt? You overestimate people, okay? Not to trigger One Piece fans, okay? I like One Piece. I benched like 600 episodes back in the day. However, this guy is just Eminem with long ears. And this guy is just Michael Jackson. See? You don't need to be original to be iconic. Moving on. Now, this is something that even I am guilty of, even today. So let me explain this next mistake. So imagine a super beautiful face. Don't imagine yourself. Imagine your hot crush. And their super duper mega hot giga, giga chad face. So everything about that face is so aesthetically pleasing. But then imagine that there's a booger on their face. See, no matter how ultra smegzy their face is, your eyes will immediately be drawn to that booger. You know, as you guys are talking, you just can't help staring at that booger. Am I gonna tell them? Or do I just shut up because I don't want to embarrass them? You think about that all day. See, this is a super common mistake in the art world. No matter how amazing your drawing is, no matter how many hours of blood, sweat, and tears you put into it, if there's a mistake, people's eyes will immediately be drawn to that. For example, I'm obviously not gonna name any names because that would be considered as trash talking about other artists. So I'm just gonna talk trash about myself. The thing about me is that, as I have said before, I am a huge cloud chaser. The moment I start drawing, my mind's all like, I can't wait to post this so we can get likes. The sooner I finish it, the sooner I can post it and get clout. You've probably seen my recent short about poses. I drew this guy right here and Everybody roasted me because of the hair. Listen, I knew it was a problem, okay? I just didn't want to fix it anymore because I was too tired of rendering the clothes. Look at those clothes. So silky, so smooth, and so sexy. Guess what, Colleen? Nobody cares. What people care more about is that hair. You know what? That's not even hair at all. It's a dang wig. Okay, so nobody was noticing the clothes, which is the thing that I'm proud of, because the hair is in the way, that dang wig. Okay, so lesson learned. If you think that your art looks a bit weird, just assume that other people will find it 10 times weirder than you see it. So let's move on to the next mistake. Stop using anime screenshots as references for your coloring. If you've noticed with anime, honestly, the shadows ain't it. The colors are really bland. I mean, it goes well with animation and all, but there isn't really any juiciness into it. I read somewhere that anime studios just put those dull colors on purpose, I forgot why. But generally, if you want to learn how to color, color picking is fine. Actually, it's a really good way to learn about colors. Just don't use anime screenshots. Speaking of color picking, that's actually a really good tip for beginners. Color picking is cool, like literally. Is there some sort of color picking police who's gonna put you in prison for stealing colors? Anyway, 
if you want to study colors, here's what you could do. Just get a reference of a photograph or drawing with real nice and juicy colors. And as you're studying that photo, just eye drop the colors and see how they turn up on this little color wheel right here. Color is super relative, okay? It gets really friggin' weird. Is this dress blue black or is it white and gold? We'll never know unless you use the eyedropper tool. It's a real good exercise to just see how color works. And honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. However, just don't use anime screenshots, okay? They were designed to be bland as heck. Anime simplifies stuff. If anime can look good with only a bunch of lines, then why is it that your art sucks even with so many details? Okay, so our next mistake is focusing too much on details. Now, I did say a while ago to fix every single mistake your art has, but don't get me wrong on this one. Fixing mistakes doesn't mean that you have to put a lot of details on your art. That's not how it works. Fixing the mistakes just means that you're fixing the part that looks weird. It doesn't mean that you have to put like a thousand strands of hair on your art. But anyway, it depends on your art style how many details you want, but you don't have to force details. For example, you don't have to draw every single crusty line that you see on the lips. What you want is for your lips to be juicy. It doesn't have to be detailed, it just has to be kissable and smegsy. And how do we do that? It's easy. Just use an airbrush to give it a soft feel and then add highlights on the cupid's bow and on the lips. It ain't that hard. Simplify stuff as much as you want, man. This is for all my digital art homies out there. Stop using the blur or smudge tool when you're drawing. Why? Because it sucks. Is there a need for any further explanation? Just kidding. Okay, well, I'm usually chill with these kinds of things. I mean, yeah, you could use any tool for any purpose that you want. I mean, it's your drawing. But for this specifically, a lot of people use the blur or smudge tool because they don't know what tool to use for blending. And you know, I ain't judging you because that's what I used to do when I was younger. Okay, maybe I am just a little bit. But if you're looking for a tool for blending, don't use the blur tool for Pete's sake. It's better to use the airbrush tool. I don't have any problems with blending because I use a custom brush from Clip Studio, which is in the description. But if I were to just use the default tools, this is what I would do, okay? I'm using a mouse to do this. So what I'm gonna do is use this default hard brush and then I'm just slapping on some solid color onto my drawing, right? And then I'm gonna use an airbrush to soften it up. And from there, it's gonna be a cycle of that until I'm satisfied. But honestly, like why would you draw with a mouse? Do you like suffering that much? If you like this video, watch this one next and I'll see you there. Oh, and don't forget to like this vid too. Stay cool.